Okay, everybody, I'm trying to get everything going here, so give me a second. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me and see me very soon. I have to get all my equipment set up. Oh, there I am, I'm seeing myself, that's always a good thing. Now if I can just see other people starting to come in, we'll see what happens here. Okay. Oh, got, a, got one person. Hopefully people will be able to see me. Hi everybody. I've got a few people, looks like a few people are getting in. Sharon, oh hi Sharon, hi Cindy. Are you hearing me okay? Is everybody hearing me okay? Cool. Hi, Lynn. So is everybody hearing me all right? Hi, Pam. Yes, okay, good. I have to use the microphone on the computer to do this one, so I'm always worried that I, I have like to, I have to pick like from four different microphones. So sometimes I, I have to, to go through and make sure I get the right one. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Marcia. People are coming in tonight. Cool. So anyway, it's, it's a Tuesday evening and it's time for a sessions on software. So, you know, Sharon, thank you for that name. That was a really good name. I like it. Sessions on software. So I'm kind of sleepy tonight. I'm hopefully I stay awake long enough to do this. <laughs> we'll wait a few minutes because we did start a little bit early. I have to get like all of these computer setup, so I had to start a little earlier tonight. Here you can see the your screen, you can turn our sound, we can turn our sound, oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, Marsha. Hi, Deb. Hi, everybody. Looks like everybody's getting in. Oh, hi, Pat. I'm, I'm seeing the, the I'm seeing the uh, uh, comments pretty well, too. The, I have to use a second computer to do this. So, um, cause when I, when you see my screen, I can't see anything else except my screen. So I have to, um, I have to do the, I have to have a second computer set up to do this. So, oh, hi Garnet. Hi Jan. Oh, hi Judy, Judy. There's Jody and Judy, sorry. Got all kinds of people. It looked like there was quite a few people signed up to come tonight, so we'll hang out here for a few minutes. So how many people have PE Design Next, which is version nine? I think a lot of you do. And some of you have per PE Design 10 and 11 now. Uh-oh, I'm spinning. Can you still see me? Is everybody still hearing me? Oh, the spinning stopped. Looks like a bunch of people came in. So is everybody still hearing me okay? When I see spinning, it kind of scares me. <laughs> All this technology stuff, you know. You still hearing me, everybody? Everybody still hearing me? Oh, we got a bunch more people coming in. Please type if you're hearing me okay, because I, I saw spinning on the screen. It always scares me when I see spinning. I have all three. You have all three. <laughs> okay. Next and 11. You hear me. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, when I see spinning on the screen, it's always a little scary, you know. Um, so anyway, I'm going to do this this class in PE Design 11. So for those of you with PE Design um, Next, I also have that on my computer and I will show you what it looks like. It does look just ever so slightly different um, than uh, PE Design 10 and 11. And they changed um, some of the tabs across the top. 
between nine, uh, nine and ten and eleven, and so um, there's extra tabs in Next that are not on uh, ten and eleven, and so I'll show you both because I have both of them on here. So I'll show you both, and um, I don't think it's going to be confusing after we get started, but just the initial screens are going to be just a little different. So if you have PE Design next. So, oh my goodness, we got 15 people now. We're doing good. People are finding us. Hopefully they remember to go to the other group because we're in, P we're in uh, sessions on software instead of on uh, the So Along With Jan site. So hopefully people find us. So, okay. It's 7.34. I can hear you, but can't see you. No, you won't be able to see me, Jan. Um, because you can see my screen. What you're seeing right now is just my computer screen. And so I'm sharing my screen. You won't see me. So, okay, well, I'm gonna open up the software. Maybe, maybe wait just another minute or so. It's 7.34, so I don't wanna wait too long so you have to sit here, but um, I know I had quite a few people wanting to come tonight, so. I think people have a little trouble remembering where to find this group because it's the other group. So you have to be in this other group to get there. <laughs> so hopefully everybody finds me. All right, looks like everybody is I'm just looking to see if I've seen all this, the scrolling going on. I think it's good. Okay. Yeah, I have to do this with two computers because all I can see is my screen and there's a little thing at the bottom that says, you know, sharing screen. And I can't see like the comments or anything on my computer. So I have to have a second computer here to do that. So, all right. So I'm going to open up first. I'm going to open up PE design next because I know a lot of you have that and you have to have your little, um, your little security device, you know, that little reader writer box that we used to put those old cards in. So if you have next, you probably had an, a machine for a while and, you had to put the little cards in, you know, to, to do your designs. So you have to plug that in to use the software. I already have it open, so I'm just gonna open it up. And the difference between this and 10, so let's start with nine. And version nine or next, um, when it opens up, is going to look more like this. And it has a little embroidery screen on it. Um, it has like a little um, wizard that opens up, I should say. And it asks you how to want to produce your embroidery. And this was the first time they introduced this into the software. It wasn't in there before. And um, so it's gotten more elaborate. So when I open up P Design 11, you'll notice the screen will be much more elaborate than it is in P Design Next. And the other thing I wanted to point out is across the top here on PE Design Next, and this is, again, this is version nine, there are five tabs across the top here. And so what they had done now in the newer version of the software, they've, they've condensed this to, to three tabs. So a lot of the stuff is has been scrunched together on one tab. So you will notice a difference when I open it up. I actually liked the version nine better because it was easier to find things. More stuff is kind of like underneath other things now. And so I have to hunt a little bit when I'm looking for things. But um, virtually the software runs the same way. Um, I haven't really um, had any problems adjusting to the new software. I actually really like PE Design 11. So um, I've kind of gotten to the point that I'm not using Next very much. And I use P Design 11. So anyway, so let's go ahead and open up 11. We're going to do the class in 11 so you can see it. But I wanted to have this up um, so you can could see it. So I'm just going to um, minimize it. And I'm going to open up P Design 11. Make sure I get the right one. There was an update today for those of you with PE Design 11. I think it came out yesterday, actually. So I updated my software and uh, this, this evening. and. I also have the palette software, which is the baby lock version of the software. I don't know. Um, I think most of you probably have PE design instead of palette. So um, palette is a little bit different. 
Um, and I also have a very hard time updating it. It would not update for me tonight, so I'm going to have to go back and see if I can get it to update. So, PE design, what is it? A lot of people ask me, you know, what PE design is. And it, what it is, it's a personal embroidery design system. You know, it's, it's um, you can produce your own embroidery designs here. And there's a lot of different ways to do it. There's uh, manual ways. There's um, auto digitizing ways. And there's a lot of fun um, wizards in here. You can make appliques. And there's a lot of really nice lettering fonts. So um, PE design is kind of an overall encompassing software and I've used PE design since PE design 5. I, I still use it. I don't use it as regularly as the dime software but I still really like it um, and so that's what it is. It's, it's an, a personal embroidery design software. Um, I always have told everybody that it has five elements. Well actually the new version has six elements now. Um, that what we're looking at right now is layout and editing, and it's the main section of the software. Um, there's also a section called design database, where you can arrange your um, embroidery designs, and you can do converting from one, one version to another, and you can see pictures of them, and that's a cool spot. Design center, which is where another um, area to do um, in di digitizing. And I'm gonna show you Design Center tonight. I actually like Design Center. Um, font creator, so you can actually make your own fonts. And I really like, I really like um, that. It's kinda of cool. Um, Marsha, she says, I can hear you but can't see you. Oh no, Marsha says the focus is screen. There's no focusing. Um, I can see it, it looks clear on my screen. So maybe it's your um, resolution on your computer screen, Marsha. I'm sorry, because it looks clear to me on my screens. Um, so Font Creator, you can make your own digitized fonts. You can, you can make your own fonts. And then there's a place called Programmable Stitch Creator, where you can create your own stitches. Now, PE Design 11 has this new section in there um, that actually allows you to create, you know those beautiful fills that are in our dream machines and our luminaires, you know those decorative fills? Um, P Design 11 actually allows you to make those now. And so it's really cool that you can create more of those um, font, those fills to put into the machine to sew out. So it's, it's actually really neat. Um, but they've added another new one and I didn't even realize it until I was starting to get ready for this class. But there's another section called Stitch Design Factory. So they're actually allowing you to, to create sewing stitches in the software now, which we always, we could do that in the sewing machine, in the brother machines, but um, they've added it to the software now too. And I haven't even played with that yet. So that will be another lesson later because I haven't actually looked at it because I just found it the other day when I was doing this. So, okay. And I wanted to show you where to find all these parts because there's a lot of pieces and parts here. And where you find them, um, when you open up, like there's an icon on your desktop, that little flower, let me just get rid of this wizard for a second. And when you go down here on your desktop, there's gonna be just a little flower here. And that is going to take you directly to layout and editing. So, that opens up the main section of the, of the uh, software, not the whole thing. But if you go down to your start menu, this is how you, there's two ways to get to the, the other parts of the, the program. So if you go to your start menu and you go down to PE design, oops, this is, this is uh, Windows 10, just so you know. Um, here is my PE design 11 folder. And if I click on that, then here's all of the other elements of the software. So here's Design Center, here's Design Database, Font Creator. If you'd like to have the instruction manual printed, this is where you find it. Um, here, it, they have an online one too, which, which is hard for me to read, but I, the instruction manual is a PDF file, and then you can print it off and, and put it in a book. 
Um, here's Programmable Stitch Creator. There's a reference guide too, and I need to print this out because there was some stuff in there that looked very interesting. So I thought I would do that. But then here's that new Stitch Design Factory. So I will play around with some of that a little bit and show you what it does. I haven't, I just, I didn't even know it was there until I opened it up. Um, <laughs> I opened it up about a week ago to do this class. So anyway, that's one way to find all the parts to this program. Just go to start and then all your programs go down to PE Design 11 and then you open it up and then there's all the different little spots that will take you to your, your other portions of the program. Or if you're in PE Design 11 already, you can um, go to them directly through layout and editing. So it'll just open up another portion of the um, software while you are got layout and editing openings open. So if I go up to option, which is up here, and then here's all those other elements. So here's design center, programmable stitch creator, um, design database, font creator, and stitch design factory. So you can also access the other portions through the software. Okay, so um, that is two ways to get to all the other parts. If you really want an icon like on your desktop, sometimes I want one for design database because I use design database quite a bit and I use design center quite a bit. I actually can make a shortcut to put on my desktop that I can then ask access some, you know, directly from my desktop. So whichever works for you. Oh, hi, Sharon. Oh, hi, Jackie. Got a couple more people came in. So that's how you can get to the all the other sections of the program. So tonight what we're going to do is I'm just going to talk to you about a little bit about all the sections, but then I'm going to do something in layout and editing, which is where we are. We're going to do just a little simple thing so you can kind of see what it does. And then I'm going to do something in Design Center as well. So I use Design Center quite a bit. It actually runs, for those of you with Dream Machines and um, Luminaires, it actually runs a lot like the, pro the, the software in Design Center, you know, Design Center. <laughs> it runs a lot like that. And I actually um, find it very comforting to see that on my sewing machine. So anyway, I use Design Center quite a bit. Okay. So, like I said, when the, the program opens up normally, and just pretend that we're opening it up right now, um, it comes up with this little wizard thing. And you do not have to have this come up if you don't want. I actually don't care for it. Um, there are a couple of things that you can only get to through this, so I sometimes need to turn it on. But you can see this, this um, little wizard, um, they call it the start wizard, has actually changed quite a bit from the first one that I showed you. So like I can open an embroidery design, I can start design database from right here also. Um, I can set my hoop size here, I can create embroidery patterns using images here. So in other words, that's one of the things we're going to do tonight. And then I can use my template designs and there's these cool designs in here and that's a way to get to it from is from this wizard um, i can import embroidery like here are text patterns and outline shapes um, so there so this has really changed quite a bit over the years um, i'm not a big fan of this wizard i never have been so honestly i click this little button down here there's a little button that i can deselect and it says always show wizard at startup if it's checked it'll open up every time if it's not checked, it will not. So mo most of the time when I open up my screen, this is what I see. So I prefer to see this. If you need to access the wizard later, you can go up to the little flower, which is the file menu, and go down and it says wizard. So that's how you can access it later and get it to come back up for you. You just go up to the file menu. I wish they would have made it just the word file instead of having the flower, but you know, they liked flowers, I guess. So anyway, that is the file menu. You know, other things are there, like um, here's our wizard down here, but new and open, the normal things are there, print, that type of thing. But that's the little flower up here on the left corner. 
Um, I'm going to talk just a little bit about the parts of the screen too. Um, so like, you know, file is our normal thing, you know, new, open, save as, all that jazz is in there. Um, this area here, I'm going to look, oh, that's my button, so i got to turn my page, excuse me. I kind of have some notes right now, so I know what I was going to do. What version are we doing? Jackie, this is version 11, but it's going to look pretty much the same as version 9, with the exception of the file menus across the top. Okay, so we, we talked about the flower, that's file. Um, they call this portion along the top here, um, where all the, like, the tools and everything are, they call it the ribbon. And there's a quick access toolbar. Depending on your software, it might be under the ribbon or over the ribbon. Now, my old software, it was over the ribbon, and so I'm talking about these little teeny things down here. Mine's under the ribbon now. So whichever is fine. You can actually move it, but I don't like to move things around because I sometimes get things mixed up. So I'll just leave it where it's at. Um, the option button up here is, is important sometimes because I can click option. And again, we talked about, you know, all the different um, sections of the program are accessible through the option button over here. Also, options is there, option and then options. And then there's a bunch of things I can do here. And one of the things that I use this area for quite a bit is I like to make my own thread charts sometimes. I also like to, you can change the system unit here from inches to millimeters. So that's where you would do that. So there's several other things here. We won't talk about everything tonight. I just kind of wanted to give you an idea where some of the stuff was. Okay. So that's option, the option menu on the top right, and then options. And then the other thing that I use quite a bit is this help button. Now the help button um, over on the top right hand corner, that's where your online instruction manual is. But then you can also check for updates there. So there's a check for updates um, button. There's like customer support, online registration, and about layout and editing, which tells you you like your version and that type of thing. But this is where you check for updates. So I do check for updates fairly regularly. Um, I have them programmed set up so that it automatically will check for updates for me. And I did do the new update today. Uh, oh, yeah, Marsha, I got it. It's uh, PE 11.1. .1. Yep. So um, I did that today, and I've got mine set to automatically check for them. So when it opens up, it'll say, hey, there's a new update for me. You can turn that off if you don't like it. So is there a cost for the updates, Jan? Yes, there are. Um, if you, depending on the version you have, you can, up, you can upgrade from version 10 to version 11, but you cannot upgrade from version nine or next to 11. You have to buy a whole new software because um, they changed the security device and the software, you cannot upgrade it from nine to 11. So mine's a full version because I got it with my sewing machine, which I really like. I actually really like 11 now, I'm getting used to it, so, okay. Um, some of the other things that are on the screen, like, you know, this main area in the center here with the white thing in the center, that's our hoop. You know, that's like our hoop thing. And then this, they call it the design page or the um, work area, you know, this area down here. And then, we, of course, you know, you got your rulers across here and down the side. And um, the other area is like... Um, there's a sewing order pane on the left. And then like this area here where it says imports, let me get rid of that. Import and all that. That's there's all kinds of stuff here. Here, this is where you can bring designs in is import. And then I have all these tabs. So like this tab is my color tab. There's not gonna be anything on here until we put something on the screen. My sewing attributes are over here. 
and my text attributes. So those will populate as I put something on the screen here in a few minutes. Okay, so all these things are under this one section on the right. And then my sewing order, you know, like how things are gonna sew. So, um, but yeah, the upgrades, the upgrades are, yes, Lynn, the upgrades are, you have to buy. So like Jan said she has P Design next. So she would have to buy the full version of P Design 11 if she wants it. it. The updates are usually free, you know, so they have updates that they fix little things or maybe add something. So, and for those of you with luminaires, there was also an update that is free um, that is, was available today or yesterday, and it's version two. So for those of you with luminaires, that just came out, so, okay? So that's some of the, the stuff that's on the screen. Like down here to underneath the work area, there's this little bar thing, and that's where you can, it's like a stitch simulator, so you, if you want to stitch something, you can, you can um, watch the little simulator go across there. Like again, this stuff will populate as we put some things on the screen. But I just kind of want to give you a little idea of what, you know, what is on the screen here. Okay, so again, checking for the latest update of the software, we, we go to help and check for updates. So when I click on that, mine's going to come up and say the most recent update for P-Design is already installed because I just did it when I got home tonight. So it is already on here. Um, if it is not updated, it will tell you, I think we look what it says here. It says that, um, it, this says there's a newer version available, and then there's a little button, and you can download it. So that way, you can get your newest version of your software, download it, and then you have to close the program and reopen it, and then it will install itself. You do have to let it um, just sit there and be a little patient with it because sometimes it takes a little bit for it to start just so you know but it will it will help you um, I don't always there's a little button here and this is where you can change this where it says always check for most recent version at, at startup I on I normally have this checked on PE design but I also have the palette software and it's kind of funky for updating. So I deselect that because I have to manually go in and make it make it update. So um, it's kind of funky, but this one works fine. So I leave it, leave this one checked. Okay. So we got all the little that little stuff done. So we're gonna we're gonna play in the software a little bit. I'm gonna click OK. And we're gonna do a little auto digitizing. Um, I don't always auto digitize, but if you have a really good um, graphic that's very clean, um, auto digitizing in the so the software is actually quite good. So we're going to do a little auto digitizing, and we're going to uh, make a little candy. And I'm going to show you how this works. And it's very fun to do some simple digitizing. There's a lot of graphics available with the with the software. And if you give me a second, I'll see if I can find some of them for you. We're going to, first, we're in layout and editing. That's where we opened up to. And I'm going to set up my hoop size first. With this software, it's actually kind of important to do that. So I usually set that up before I start doing anything else. So I'm gonna to go to my file menu. And I'm gonna go down to um, design settings which is here. And for those of you with Next, it's gonna be along the top ribbon. And they moved it, so it took me a while to find it <laughs> when I started moving to this new software. So, um, oh, before I do that, let me do one real quick thing. Let me show you the other quick, fast place to change from inches to millimeters, or back to inches. So along these, these uh, rulers here, there's a little teeny button in the top left-hand corner. And it's right now it says millimeters. I need it to be an in inches so I can tell what I'm doing. So if I click that little button in the corner, it goes to inches. And then if I need to go back to millimeters, if I just go up to that little teeny button, and now says inches, I can go back to millimeters. So it's a very fast way to change from millimeters to inches. It's just that little teeny button in the top left-hand corner of your rulers. Okay, I love that little button. That, that was something new in P-Design Next. So, 
Okay. So now we'll go back to the file and to design settings because I want to set up my hoop. This is where I find my hoops. And I'm just going to use a little four by four hoop tonight. I'm going to choose my home machine because that's what I'm going to sew this on. And I'm going to click, whoops, second here. Yeah, my four by four is what I want. And I'm going to click OK. So I've got my, my home machine chosen under machine type and my page size, which is four by four. And then I'm gonna click okay at the bottom. All right, so then I've got my little four by four hoop there. And now I'm going to go, I need to find a picture. So to use the auto digitizers, including photo stitch, those are done with um, a picture. So we need a picture. And any time that you work with pictures in PE Design, you need to look at the tabs at the top. I'm on the Home tab now. But if I go to the next one over here, it says Image. So any time that you need to find an image or a picture, that's the tab you need to go, because that's how you get them into the software. So I'm going to go to Image. And I'm going to go to find a little piece of candy that I had. So if I go to auto punch first, so we're actually going to auto punch. There's all these different ways that you can do soft, um, do auto digitizing, but we're going to use auto punch tonight. So I'm going to click auto punch. And I know that I've got this little piece of candy in my folder on my desktop, but there are a lot of graphics with the software. And they are in, they're going to be in your documents. Just so you know, there's a folder that has a bunch of stuff in it. And it's going to be under PE Design. And I got to find it here in a second. It's going to be under PE Design 11. And then there's a folder there, and this is in my documents. There's a folder there that says Sample. And then there's a whole bunch of different folders. So, like, here's Layout and Editing and like flowers, various sew types. Um, let's see, print and stitch. I don't think that's the folder I want. I think I want the other one, second. And there's a tutorial one too. So there's all the tutorials also. So a lot of the graphics that come with the software are actually in your documents. There's also um, some of them in the program, as I remember, let me go see where they've hidden them now. Um, I'm in this PC and Windows, my uh, C drive. I think it's going to be under, let's see, I think it's going to be program files times 86 and brother. Here's P design 11. Oh yeah, so that's where they've hidden the clip art now. So here's all this clip art. If I go in there, there's just gobs of pictures that you can play with to practice. So like here's all these folders and then there's a whole bunch that are just out in this folder. So these are all good clean graphics for you to play with um, to practice in your software. So it's under this PC, the C drive, uh, program files times 86, brother, and then it's under clip art. So the lot, lot of these, and then this is also where they have all of the, um, they have a lot of designs that come with this program. And so that's where these are as well. So there's a bunch of the, them in here. Here's the design library. And there's a whole gob of designs in here too. So that's where everything is. Just so you know, they've, they've kind of hidden them over the years. They've changed where they put them. <laughs> so I always have to hunt them down. Okay, so we're going to go back to auto punch. Because I, I know where my little graphic is that I want to use tonight. Oops, second here. I want to use um, this little uh, piece of candy. It's in my, it's on my desktop. Second, my computer's acting weird here. There we go. There's my little piece of candy. So I'm going to use my piece of candy. I'm going to get that, grab it, and I'm going to click open. And remember, we did this in Auto Punch, and Auto Punch is a is a um, a auto digitizer, and it has like a wizard. So it tells you step by step. It helps you walk through the design and to create it. So it's actually really pretty easy. Okay. So the first box that opens up is Select Mask, 
And there's different masks over here, different shapes and so on. You can also mask this whole design, you know, and mask right around the candy if you want. But in the auto digitizer, I don't do that very often because um, you, I can actually um, click on a button and it will take all the background out because I just want to sew out this piece of candy. So I'm not going to do anything different here. Also, this particular piece of, of this graphic is very good and I don't have to do much with it. So I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to leave it as it is and I don't need to tune the image or anything. We will talk more about these masking and image tuning pages when we do photo stitch because I have to use it more there than I have to here. Okay, so we're just going to click next. This is this little wizard. It helps us through. And the check mask shape modify image button is really cool because it has this new little thing down at the bottom that says fit to page. So if you want my, I want my candy to be the full size of the page. So I'm just going to click fit to page and it actually made it a little smaller. And that's going to be good because we're going to add a little something to it here in a minute. And then I'm going to click next again. Now this is where um, the, I have to turn my page because I have to make a few notes here. Okay, so this is telling me that the computer is seeing about, um, I don't know, eight colors on this little piece of candy. And my eye only sees four colors. It sees yellow, pink, actually it sees three, yellow, pink, and black. And then white is actually the background. So you notice that there's like a little hash mark all the way around the candy. That's not going to soak because I don't want the background to soak. If you want it to soak, if you click on it, it the, the hash marks go away and it will then sew white on the background. That's one of the colors that it's picking. I don't want that to sew, so I'm just going to leave the hash marks on. Um, but when I look over at the side and it says omit region colors, all these colors over here on the edge, I don't really have that many colors. So um, I only see three or actually four with the white. So I'm going to go down here to the bottom where it says, and I'm just going to use the brother colors, the basic colors. And it says max number of colors. Well, I know that my eye only sees four colors. So I'm going to tell it to look for four colors. And I'm going to click retry. And now when I look at the picture, it actually looks much more like I'm seeing it. When I look at uh, over the side, omit region colors, it says white, yellow, pink, and black. And that's what I see when I see this little um, candy. So I have to go down now. I, I didn't used to have to do this as much. With the newer software, I do have to adjust these numbers down here a little bit. So when you're looking at your graphics, go down here and play with these max number of colors a little, and it may make your, your graphic turn out better. I also occasionally need to move these little sliders down here. Most of the time, the um, default settings are pretty good on them. So I, I, I normally just leave them alone. So I'm happy with this. You know, I've got my four colors, and I've got um, my everything looks pretty good so I'm just going to click finish and when I click finish it's going to make it into an embroidery design that wasn't that easy so there's my little piece of candy and that is now ready to stitch I can put it on a card I can put it on a USB stick I can send it uh, with this software which is cool to my luminaire I can send it wirelessly right to the machine right now and it will then I can sew it out um, I did notice one thing. I'm going to show you one quick thing when I did this. I was looking at the, the sew out and I noticed that like some of these little polka dots were satin stitches and some of them were fills and I kind of want them all to be fills. So I wanted to show you quick how to fix that because that, this is how then you can go through and edit what you get from the auto digitizer because sometimes it's not the way I want it. So I'm going to go and look at over on the left. See where the sewing order is over here? Now we got stuff here. And these are polka dots. So here's, you know, here's the yellow at the top, and then here's the polka dots. So if I touch, oops, second, I got to deselect it. There we go. 
just click on the gray to deselect things. But if I go over here and I click on one of the polka dots, there'll be a little red ants, like little red ants walking around it after you select it. And that is one of the ones that has a satin stitch in it. I'd like it to be a fill. So I thought maybe I would just go ahead, and if you look at the top of the screen, it lets me change some of these things. So like right above my work area, it says that the pink is a satin stitch. Well, I want it to be a fill stitch. So I'm just going to go ahead, and I'm gonna click on the arrow next to satin stitch, and I'm changing it to a fill. And then I can go find the next one, and that one is also a satin stitch, and I'd like it to be a fill. So it's right up here. Just gonna make it a fill. And then I'm gonna go down to the next one. That one's also a satin stitch. I'd like it to be a fill. So let's just go ahead and change these. And then I'm, gonna, I'm just going down my sewing order here. Now that one's a fill already. Let's do the next one, let's see. The next one's a satin stitch. So I'd like it to be a fill. So you see, you can edit these. Originally when this was came out years ago, you could not edit much. Um, of your result. So um, I really like this This uh, as a new software has changed over the years. I can do a lot more. So there's the little satin stitch again. I want it to be a fill. So I'm just touching the little polka dots on in my sewing order, see, over here in the left. And that one's a satin stitch. Let's make it a fill. And one last one. I think that one's also a satin stitch. So let's make it a fill. And you can see I have lots of other choices in there too. So look at all the different choices. You know, I have motifs and radials and spirals and netting and zigzags and decorative fills. I have all these things now that I can choose. So it is pretty cool. There's a lot of new stuff in the software. All right, so now I have my candy and all my little polka dots or fills instead of satin stitches. So I, I think my little my little candy looks pretty good. The last step over here you know in that sewing order is the outline so i think my candy looks pretty good but you know i'd like to put some lettering on it so i can do lettering in this software too give me a second i'm going to turn the page so i'm going to put the word candy on here so i need to go back to my home tab so if i'm going to go across the top here to home and I want to get my text tool. So it's the letter. So here's the text, and I'm going to get my letter. And there's several different kinds of text tools in here. The first one is your normal text. Um, then the next one is the very small ones. There's about 10 or so little small fonts in here that sew out about a quarter of an inch. So they're really nice. There's a monogramming one. And then this last one is upper mapped text, user maps. So I can actually map my own fonts, like if I bought them. I can bring them in here and I can actually map them and make them into a keyboard font so I can type instead of having to go file, import, file, import, file, import for every letter. So that's kind of cool. That was something new they've added recently. But I'm just gonna use my regular text tool. And I'm just gonna click on the, on the design area. And then over now on the right-hand side, see things are opening up and becoming active because now I'm working with text. So I am going to go over here to the right and I'm going to just type in the word candy. Okay, and I'm gonna find a font that I like. So if you look up at the top here, you have to kind of go from over to the right where you're typing up to the top again and there all of my fonts are up here. So I can click on that arrow. Oops, maybe. I think I have to hit enter first, there we go. Yep. Some of them you have to click enter before it'll let you get change your fonts. So here's my fonts. And I have about a um, hundred and let me see how many there are. I've forgotten how many there are now. There's a hundred and some now that are actually digitized fonts. And then, yeah, there's 120 that are actual digitized fonts. Um, one of my favorite ones to use, I think I used in the sample. Which one did I use? I always forget which one I use. Oh, number 10. That was a good, that's always a good one. So let's go back up here to number 10. And this is just a real cute little block type of letter. And I can change the size of my letters. 
by pulling on the, the like the corner arrow and pulling them out or I can go up to the top up here where it says 0.53 inches I can change it there so if I want it to be like 0.8 inches I can change it there if I want to go back I can go to undo which is down here along this little bar here under my ribbon so there's a lot of things you can do with the text we'll we'll get more into text later but I just wanted to show you kind of a basic little text so there's my candy now I would like to change the color of that um, I don't want like the red with it so let's make our candy oh let's make it pink or something so to change that I have it selected because there's boxes around it you can see and actually I need to make sure that's selected with my selection tool yeah it was okay so up here if you notice if I touch my text tool again there's a little where it says satin stitch and this is my text stuff up here see this little thread spool little thing up here this will let me change my colors so I'm gonna go ahead and let's make it pink so I'd like my color to be pink so now I've got pink candy and my little piece of candy that's yellow and pink and black you can also change the color if you if you select your item that you want to change the color in the sewing order over here on the on the left there's a little spool there as well if I click on that little spool it opens up remember I told you there was a color box on the other side of the screen well that's where I can change my colors so that opened up my my colors over here and then I can change there so there's a couple three different places to change your colors but they're all like right in front of you when you when you select something it opens up the box of the things you can do so that's kind of what I wanted to show you with the colors so there's a lot of things you can do but as soon as you select it then it becomes alive on the screen and then you know you can change something there okay so we're going to go ahead at this point this is ready to sew I'm ready to send it to my machine I can choose up here on the home tab again if I go over here to the right and say send I can send it to my USB if I have a memory stick plugged in I can send it directly to my machine um, if you have it wired if it's wired directly to your computer my luminaire no longer has that uh, ability you can write it to a card you know if you have those one of those old cards writers sometimes I have an old machine I still need that and then I can also send it to my network machine so my luminaire the last choice is I can actually send this design wirelessly to my luminaire so it's really cool and the, the, that's how you would save. you could save it that way to a USB or whatever if you just need to save it to your computer we would just go to file like we would for many other things save as and then I'm going to save it as um, candy and I'm going to save it as a PES file and I'm going to save it on my desktop and so I'll just click save and then my piece of candy that I've digitized is now on my desktop so I can put it I can put it on a stick when I'm ready what if you want each letter a different color you can do that Pat so to do that this is an advanced one Pat had a question so anyway yes you can see the little white squares on each letter if I select just the letter C now it's just the letter C that's chosen I can go down and I can change the, the color of that if I go up and click the white box on the letter A I can change the color on that that's how you change each individual color is you have to choose it with the and then choose the little box okay that's how you do it it's not hard it's very easy and that's what those little boxes are for so we can we can actually manipulate each individual letter it's, it's cool I like I, I like some of this they've got some really cool lettering stuff in this program so we'll get more into lettering but I wanted to at least show you a little bit tonight okay so now you're ready to embroider this can go to the machine and we're ready to embroider it okay so I, this is just a little taste of, of 
layout and editing and a little bit of the tools. There's a ton of stuff in this program, but I didn't want to get everybody confused. I just wanted to show everybody a little bit in all of the sections. So I'm going to do a little section now. So this was layout and editing. I'm going to do a little section now in design center, which is sort of like in our bigger machines. A lot of you have the machine I do. So we're go I'm going to go in there and I'm going to show you how I can make and design in there, similarly to how I do it on the machine. So to get to um, Design Center, which is the section, second section of this, I'm going to go to Option and I'm going to go to Design Center. It's right here under Option. I'm going to click on Design Center and it's going to open up that section of the program. Um, I can also, I also get this little wizard that's going to open up. And I usually leave this one um, checked because I like this one to come up. It helps to walk you through the whole procedure. It's very easy. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to produce embroidery with a graphic. I'm going to start out with a picture and that's this first little button from an image. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do that, click on the, from an image, and then I have an image in a file. There's different places you can get your images on this, like if you have a scanner or if you have it, um, a current image, if you already had one up, or if, if you've had it saved on your clipboard. But I'm just going to go get it out of a file. And my image, is, again, is in my little folder on my desktop. And I'm going to do this little flower. And I'm going to click open. So now we're in Design Center. This is the first stage of Design Center. And it's going to let me pick an outline of my little flower here. And so this little cut to line image screen opens up. And I'm going to make this bigger because I can't really see it very well on my screen. Can you see as I roll over in here, I get an eyedropper. And I don't know if you can see it too well on the screen. It's pretty small. But I want to choose my outline. I'm trying to get an outline to start here. And then I'm going to go on and put the colors in. So I'm going to click on the black because that's the color I want my outline to be. And, but whoops, I also touched a little bit of the pink. I don't want that pink. So if I deselect it, it, I'll, I'll only have black as the outline. So that's the way I want it to be. Um, I'm going to leave everything basically else alone. I hardly ever change these things down here. And I'm going to click OK. And it's going to take me into the next section to help me walk through this. So again, this is kind of a, like a wizard. And it works really, actually really well. So here, I'm going to look at my little design here. Um, unfortunately, this section of the software has never had very good tools. They're very hard to draw with and stuff. So I don't do much drawing in here. They give you these little pens and little paint brushes and stuff in different sizes. And then they, thank God they actually added erasers here because they finally did. But the pens are kind of hard to draw and they look like a little like a paintbrush and you can see as I'm drawing here it it doesn't work very well so I try not to have to draw too much here and I use undo a lot in this section so we're actually not going to do any drawing tonight this actually looks pretty good this little outline and this little wizard section then is going to take me to the next section of this there's like four sections in um, Design Center. It's like the, where we were when we started with our graphic, and then the second section is where we are right now. And the third section is called Figure Handle. And that's what this little button up here says, is to figure handle. If you look in the manual, it, it, it prints out the stages for you, and I think you'll understand it, but I don't need to do much in this stage. I'm gonna go to the next one. I'm going to click finger ha figure handle, and it's, it's got a little conversion box, and, you know, usually everything's pretty much okay, so I'm just going to click okay. 
And now it's taken me to the place in the program called So Settings. And what it's gonna let me do is it's gonna let me put in my stitches. So this is the area where I put all my stitches in. However, I did notice that there's a couple of little weird spots on this flower. Um, if you notice, there's a couple of little strange little like jutting out pieces at the bottom here, and I don't really want those on here. So I'm going to select those with this little select points tool. And it has now my little flower has all these little nodes. It has like all these little um, little points on it. And I'm going to just going to click on these little points down here and get rid of them. I want to make it black. And I just click delete on my keyboard. So, so I don't have those funky little lines on the end of my leaves. I'm going to click, click delete. I'm going to click it once and make it black and then delete. So that kind of cleaned up the bottom of my little flower, but otherwise it looks pretty good. So I think we're good. All right. And I'm getting ready now to go and actually put the stitches in. So actually this is the third stage, sorry, I misspoke. This is actually the figure handle stage because it, it lets you change how the design looks. So now I need to go to the sew settings and again, it's up here. And if you just kind of click the button on the top right hand corner, it just takes you to the next stage or the next area of the wizard. And I'm just gonna click to sew settings. And here is my flower with my outline. And I want to give me a second. I'm going to turn my page here a couple times. I want to do. Um, I got to. I got to tell the computer what kind of outline I want on my flower, and then I'm going to tell it what kind of outlines or what kind of fills I want. So, second here, I'm turning my pages several times. I've just been making notes here. Okay. So. I would like my outline to be a, a zigzag stitch or a satin stitch. And I'm going to choose a tool at the top because I, I can do lines and I can do regions or lines and fills. So I'm going to do line first and I want the whole line to be the same. So I'm just going to click line all. And the thing I love about this program is that this will be a continuous outline. It will not start and stop. It, or, and if it does, it's very little because it, um, it tries to make it all in one piece. And I love Design Center in the machine for the same reason. That's why it makes lovely, lovely red work and stuff like that because the line is continuous and it doesn't start and stop and start and stop. And it's very easy to digitize it because all I have to do is watch. I pick my line tool. I'm going to, instead of a running stitch here, I want it to be a satin stitch or a zigzag stitch. I choose the stitch I want, and I'm, all I have to do is go down and touch the line with my left click. And look, I have satin stitches all the way around. So if I were going to do this as red work, maybe, I would choose the triple stitch for red work. And I would maybe change my color, there's that little spool again, to maybe red. And then, oops, there we go. And then I go down and click on the line again, and now it's a triple stitch in red. And that design is actually ready to be sent to my sewing machine very soon. So that's how easy it is to do red work. I love this section of the program because I use this for that type of thing. I, I like to make red work and it's very fast. The design center in the sewing machine is very similar to it. It works very similarly, except then we're scanning it into the machine, but it creates a, an, a continuous outline. And I've always loved this. So, okay, so let's go back to the satin stitch. I'm gonna use a satin stitch for this one. We'll do some fills here too. Make it black again. Yep, there's my black, thank you. And then we're gonna click left again, and there's my satin stitches again, okay? And I would like now to put some fills in. So I can put the fills in with the region tool. They call fills regions in PE Design. So I'm gonna click the region tool, 
And I'm going to look up here at the top again, and it's going to let me choose a fill. There's all kinds of different things. You can put satin stitches, fills, programmable fills, concentric circles, spirals, stipples, every, anything you want, cross stitch. So those are all the different types of fills you can use. I'm just going to use a regular fill stitch today, but I would also like to um, put some different colors in. So I'm going to start with the leaves. I always kind of start with the leaves when I do this, and I'm going to make my leaves green. So let's go up here to the little thread spool again, and let's find a green. And this is this looks like a good green right here. Okay, so we'll pick the green, leaf green. I guess that's a good color, and then. The one thing about this section of the software, you do want to kind of be thinking in a in a um, reasonable order. You know, don't be skipping all over. Kind of do it in a um, systematic order as you're going around the flower, because that's the way it's going to sew, and then you'd have to fix it later. So I try to save myself some steps. So I'm going to go. Here's my leaf. I'm going to go over here. And then here's another leaf. And see, I'm kind of working my way around the flower. I'm just left clicking and I'm putting in my stitches. So I'm going to go around here. Okay, so there's all my leaves. If I'd like to look to see what it looks like, kind of like in real life, I can go up to the top again. And here's a thing called realistic preview. So it kind of makes me, it looks like the stitches. So I can see what they look like. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to sit here and look at my, my flower. I like the outline. Um, the flower stitches are pretty, and they, they're a nice fill. So I think that looks pretty good. And when you're done looking at the realistic preview, you just touch the button again, and it goes back to your working area. Now, you cannot do a lot of stuff in realistic preview. You have to um, work in the working space like I am again. So you have to turn it off. To, to do much more. So I'm pretty happy with this. This looks good. If you want to do some changing of, say, the directions or anything like that, I can do that and in, in each section by going down to a leaf section and right-clicking on it. And when I right-click, this new box is going to come up. And it gives me the option of changing the density of changing the direction of the stitches. So maybe I want my direction to all be like the direction of my leaf, um, kind of going from the outside to, you know, from the inside to the tip. I can change that with this little slider. And then when I do that, I'm gonna move my little box over to get it out of the way. I am, since I right, I right clicked to get my box to come up, I'm gonna left click to set the stitches. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to change the sewing or, or the sewing direction of the sleeve. It's going to move it around. And then I'm going to left click to set, the, set it in the, the design. Let's do another one. This one's right click to start. I'm going to change my direction and left click to set it. Let's do another leaf. I'm going to right click. I'm going to move it around, and I'm going to left click to set it. So let's look at this. So I'm going to close this box, get it out of our way. And remember, that realistic preview is really cool because so then we can see it. So now when I'm looking at my leaves, I've got the stitches kind of running along the, the, the direction of the leaf. They're kind of running from the inside to the out, the inside to the out and so on, and I could go all the way around all my leaves and change every one of them the same way, okay? So that is a kind of a quick overview of how you can change like the direction of your stitches in here. It's not hard, you just right click on the area you wanna change. So I'm gonna go back out of realistic preview. Has to think here for a second. Are you gonna be happy? There it goes. Okay, sorry. Sometimes it takes a couple of clicks. And I want to put some flower, of some of the flower in here. So let's do um, our fill stitch. We've got our fill stitch up here. But let's do like pink for the flower. Or how about red? Let's do red. I think I want a red rose. 
and let's do let's put a red in here I'm just left clicking I'm gonna put some other colors in so let me just kind of choose some areas here let's get this box out of the way so we can I just click that box shut get it out of the way put in some other red parts of the rose Maybe like that. That looks pretty. And then let's put maybe these other pieces in like a really dark pink or something so that there's a little difference in the color. So I'm going to go up and change my color again with that little, the little thread spool. Let's go to a dark pink. And then I think let's go, and again, remember, I'm kind of doing these in a logical order so that they're not jumping all over. There we go. Go around here, this one here. And then I think I want the center to be yellow. So let's just grab the yellow color up here. I'm going to choose the yellow. And then I'm going to click the center. Okay, so I've set the stitches in all of those by just left clicking. Let's look at the realistic preview again. And so here is my flower. I have kind of a red rose with this kind of pink in here. It, it's okay. I might I might change that before I actually stitch it. And my and my leaves are in green. I can also change the um, direction of those stitches in the flowers. The flower, if I want, I can click out of realistic preview again. And remember how we did that. You right click on the area you want to change. When this comes up, here's your little direction. I can change the direction by turning the little dial and that looks good so then I can left click on that section and it sets the stitches so this area here is um, a lot of fun to play with you can have a lot of different options available to you and you can just really go around and spend time playing with your design and cleaning it up and adding direction and color and it's so much fun to do this. So I think I'm happy with my rows. I played around with some of my stitches and I'm ready to go on and make it an embroidery design. Give me a second here. I need to turn my page again. Okay. And remember, you cannot work in that realistic preview mode. You have to be on the right, it has to be kind of a flat color for you to work. And if you have it in realistic preview, it won't let you do anything. Everything will be grayed out, so that'll remind you. Okay, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with my flower. I think I'm ready to make it into an embroidery design. So I have to go up here to the top. Remember our little wizard, the, the, the right-hand button at the top takes us to the next step. Okay, so Pat, are you the only one with no sound? It's still showing for me, so I think we're okay. All right, so I'm going to send it to layout and editing. So this is the, that's the last button on the right. So we're going to click on send to layout and editing. And it allows me to, whoops, second here. Let me click cancel for a second. I'm going to get rid of my candy on my page here. Let's get rid of candy. There we go. We'll get rid of our candy first. Then we'll go back to Design Center. So we're going to send this to Layout and Editing now. Can you hear and see fine here? Okay, cool. So we're all right. It must just be Pat. Thank you, Lynn. Um, so we're in Design Center, and I'm going to go to the last Send to Layout and Editing. Well, we've already been there tonight. We know where that is. So I'm going to click layout and editing and this little box comes up and it lets me choose some options i want to import this as stitches sometimes you need to use outlines but i just want stitches and i want it to be a hundred percent fine the size that it is it's going to be about four by four and the orientation is going to be kind of up and down that's the way i want it and i'm going to click import so it's gonna bring it, remember we were in Design Center, making our little design, just kind of like we got it on the embroidery machine. And now I'm gonna bring it into layout and editing to make it be 
a design. So I'm going to click Import. And when I've done that and I bring it in here, now it's actually a PES file just so I can go ahead and put this into my embroidery machine. So we've come full swing from that little piece of that little graphic and you can see all the different things I did in, in Design Center to this. It's I love I've always loved Design Center. It's so much fun to play in there. And it, it sounds so much harder than it actually is. So what I would do is I would encourage you to go to those graphics where all those pictures were and just start pulling a picture into to Design Center and walking through the steps because the, the software kind of walks you through the steps to get the design. And it's really fun to play with. I've made lots of designs this way. So this is my design. I can now send it to my card, to my USB, to my machine, whatever I want to do. Or I can go File, Save As. And I can save it as, I want to save it as Rose. So I'm just going to save it on my desktop and save it as, as Rose. Okay, so there's my little flower that we created. Um, people also ask me quite regularly, how do I make this into a different type of design? So let's say you also have a Viking sewing machine, or you also have a Bernina sewing machine, or something like that. You can actually. Um, export this into a different format. And so I'll just say I want my flower to go into a Janome sewing machine. I could go file, and then there's a button at the bottom that says export. All of the other file formats are there. So you click export, and when I open this up, and I look down at the bottom where it says save as type, it's not just PES anymore. It is um, DST, EXP, HUS, VIP, so there's all my other formats for the other sewing machines. So you can easily do it. It's just under export instead of save as. Because the save as is all just, now they said they put something new in here. I'm going to look while we're in here. Save as. They said they did some different things um, with the type. So I can actually save in all the different older formats of PES. So like, for those of you who have PE Design Next, if I would save this in version 11, you would not be able to open it because you don't have the, the newer software. If I save this as PE Design 9, then, I, then you would be able to open it up in your software. So I sometimes need to think about that if I'm giving designs to someone and they need to open it and look at it, I gotta, op I gotta save it in an older version. So that is under File Save As, because I have all these options available underneath here. And the export gives me the other file formats for the other embroidery machines. Okay, so I don't want, every, I don't want this to run too long. We've, we're a little over an hour. Um, I wanted to just touch quickly on a couple of the other sections so you can kind of see what the screens look like. This was section number two, or design center. And if I go into, whoops, I'm gonna close design center if you give me a second. And go back into layout and editing where my flower was. If I go to option and go to programmable stitch creator, which is the third section, this will open up also. And this is where I can make my um i can make my own stitches i can make my own um like motif stitches and fills and stamps all kinds of things so i can create my own stuff here and it's a really fun place to play and draw and stuff like that so that that's that's a whole class just by itself but i wanted you to see what the screen looked like if you look at the screen they are similar each section has very similar looking icons on it. So that is Programmable Stitch Creator. And then one of my favorite places, and we'll have a, a class just on Design Database. I love Design Database. So I'm gonna to go to Option and Design Database. 
And what's in here is this is a way that, um, that you can see your designs. You can move your designs around. You can organize your designs in here. You can um, visually look at them. Whoops, sorry. My, uh, it's mad. There we go. Um, I, but I can do a lot of stuff. I can navigate on this side of the screen and I can look at um, my designs and I can like format them and I can move them from, from folder to folder. So it's like an organizational tool. And, and you can then you can search for your, your designs if you can't find them. You can use Design Database to do that. So we'll have a whole class just on Design Database because it's really a cool section of the um, software. Now, this little section at the bottom, I still have an old machine that needs the, one of those little brother cards to put the designs on. So I still use this to write my, write my cards so I can, I can actually write like 10 or 15 designs onto the card all at the same time in this section. And that's what that little thing at the bottom says. It says card writer because <laughs> I actually have the card writer hooked up tonight. And then I can choose my hoop over here and then I can write everything to a card. So that's another thing that this option has, this design database has. And then one last thing, there are option, and then here's font creator. So when I open font creator, that's where you can make your own fonts. Yes, Marsha, this that's a we're gonna we're gonna have this class. It's very fun. I mean, I, I like design database. And then this is the font creator. So I can actually make my own fonts in here. So again, if you look at the ribbon across the top, it actually looks very much like the other parts of the software. It's very similar. And um, the last one is that new one. And I, like I said, I just opened it for the first time. It's called Stitch Design Factory. So let's go look at that one. And it allows you to create your own sewing stitches. So it's actually kind of like the little, the little stitch creator in the machine. And I, I was so surprised when they put it in the software. It actually is not in, um, it is not in the palette software. It's only in the PE design software. And I found that out because I have both of them. So yeah, it's only in that, but it's cool. And I think that'll be fun to play with like it, make a decorative stitch. I think it'd be easier on the computer to create it than it is on the machine because it's a little bit tedious on the machine. So, okay. So that's the other sections of this program. Don't get overwhelmed. What we normally will be using is this what you're seeing right on the screen now where we're, you're going to be using layout and editing. That's the meat and, and, you know, that's the meat and potatoes of the program. That's where we'll do all of our lettering and our editing, and we can make appliques, and we can uh, change the colors, and all that stuff is all done on this main screen. And the other stuff is like the, like the fun and the frosting. So um, there's a lot of sections to this program. And the, the notes that I was reading tonight, would you like me to upload these to um, the file section? They are done in PE Design Next. So for those of you with the newer software, you may find just a little bit of a difference, but I think once you see them, you'll be able to figure it out. So is it okay if I put those up on the file section for you? And then you'd have some notes that you can kind of go by if you want to see some pictures. And then, um, but you'll have the video that you can play with. So I kind of use those for me as a guideline tonight. Okay, so this was kind of a kind of an overall look at this software. This is not by any means we're not touching very much on it, but you can see some of the things you can do in it. It's a lot of fun. It's actually pretty user friendly, and I've been using it for many years, and I still enjoy coming in here and playing around. So um, I will upload by P Design Next and the graphics into the file section. And I will, um, oh, and next time, what did I decide we were gonna do next time? In September, let me look at my, in September we're gonna do applique, in, but we're gonna go back to PEP, the Dime software, in September. And then in October, we're gonna come back here and do photo stitch. And then we'll, then I'll decide what we're gonna do in November and December. 
can't believe that I'm thinking about November and December already. But anyway, <laughs> I don't know that I want the snow. Yes, yes. Oh, everybody would like the, the everybody would like the uh, notes. Okay. Um, I think with the video, you'll be able to kind of follow along. Um, but the notes were written in the older software. And I, I know a lot of you have that software, so you'll be fine. If those of you with PE Design 10 and 11 have questions, please email me or instant message me, and I will help you because it is just ever so slightly different. But it's not so much that I think you can figure it out. So, okay. What's the price of PE Design 11 from next? Uh, Marsha, you cannot upgrade from PE Design Next to 11. You have to buy the full version of the software. I'm sorry. You can not You can upgrade from 9 to 10, but I don't know if I have any 10 updates anymore. Do you know the cost of PE Design 11? No. You can't go from, from Next to 11. You have to just buy version 11, the full version. So I'm sorry. Will you be doing a video on the pattern maker? Yes, Lynn, I will. That's going to be a video. I just needed some time to think about what I was going to do. <laughs> so yes, I will. That'll be that'll be probably the, yet this month or early next month. So I have to I have to figure out what I want to do. Okay, so I will um, go ahead and say good night for for now. And if you have questions, I'll get this uh, these notes updated or uploaded to the group. And next month, we will do some applique in PEP. And next, on Sunday night, we will have So Along with Jan, and we will make a, we're going to make the little keychains. So if anybody has any questions about that, let me know. And so thank you, everybody. And hopefully, this helped you get kind of started a little bit with the PE design software. So it's a lot of fun to play with. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank you. Bye.